All right, welcome back. This is the Scottle IR360 uh, video two. We went ahead and probed our GPU chip with a fine wire probe. We're now going to install a bottom board temperature probe. So we're going to loosen up our board here and move it off to the side. So we're going to need a little piece of um, rigid copper wire. We're going to make it so that it's just long enough to come out under the board area. And we're going to need a screwdriver. So we're going to loosen up one of our top housing screws and we're going to hoop, hoop our little uh, piece of copper on there keep it in place now this is going to be basically our lower board center so we got a meter and a somewhat fine wire probe here so we want that to basically come out and become an extension of this copper piece. So we're going to try to wrap the copper around the finer wire probe, which is kind of backwards, but that's the uh, gist of it here. In the end, we want to try and twist it as much as possible some control over that wire. Alright. Now we want to bend this so that it's coming out under the board and sticking up so when we set our board on there it kind of sits on that probe. So we don't want it too high because then it won't But we want to make sure we're sitting on that versus that. Alright, so that should be good. Now we're going to um, secure that a little bit just in case it gets tugged on. It doesn't get pulled all over the place. Captain tape works great on the board, but it also works better out of the board heat area so that you can actually um, keep your wires from pulling around. So it's always good to tape it a little bit further away from the heat. Doesn't want to tape on this painted metal though. But that should this should be good. We're not gonna be moving this around, so. So we have a meter here measuring our lower board temperature, so now when we set our board back on top of there, we're going to want to try and keep that away from the bottom air nozzle, so it's measuring surface temperature, not air temperature. Now that is a, uh, a solid wire probe, so it's not a air temperature probe. It does not have the little solid ball on it, so it should give us a good, good reading. <laughs> Everything's back in place and our probe is nicely touching the bottom like a like your finger would touch the bottom of the board. So we're going to go ahead and clip our board in place now. The first step we're going to want to do here and we're going to want to kind of go through this quickly so that we can get this all videoed is we want to find out how well our preheater, preheater works. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch to IR preheat which is going to kick off our top panels and it's going to fire up our preheaters. So what we're looking for here is we have our preheater set to 190. We want to see how fast this unit's going to get up to 190. We want to see at 190 what is that in relation to our board, what's our board temperature. So the, the first step of your profile is the lower 
is the lower um, hot air or lower um, IR preheater your preheat phase. So the first step is our preheat phase. So we're going to bring our preheater up to temperature. It's going to take almost 10 minutes to do, uh, which we almost have 10 minutes. So we should have enough time. We have five minutes right now. So we're going to bring up our preheater and see what that correlates to on our board temperature and see where that puts us. So it's going to take us about, about seven, eight minutes, I would think, on this unit. It's, it's a nice size preheater. It's going to take about seven, eight minutes for this PS3 board to get up to temperature. So right now our, our meter is reading about 60, but our board is still at 20, about 25. So that shows you, um, the big thing with these units are, a lot of these units come with the a bottom sensor is off in the back there, and it's down tight against the plate. So what's that's, what that's reading is more plate temperature than board temperature. So when we set our plates at, at a certain temperature, the question is what's our board temperature, which is why we have a second meter. And the thing is, if our plates are at, at 200, that doesn't mean our board's going to be at 200 because our plates may hold a steady 200, but you got outside air mixing in with that, you got the room temperature and everything else affecting that. So your plates may be at 200, but your board may only get up to about 160. So we're going to find out what that shift is. We want to shoot for about 180, so we set it to 190. I know we're going to have some loss. This, one, this machine had a probe that was very tight against the plates, so... Yeah, after about seven, eight minutes, I think we're going to be close to um, maybe 160, 170. So we're going to see see how that works out. The software doesn't seem to pick up any um, any information. Actually, while that's running, let's check the other. Uh, let's check the software that comes with this unit. And see what that gives us gives us basically nothing. So yeah, so this this um this software gives us less information than the uh, BGA mod software. So we're gonna stick with the BGA mod software. Um, I see nothing beneficial about using the uh, using the IR software. We'll stay with BJ mods. So we're up to about 124 on the plates, and we're at about 54 on the board temperature. Now the big thing is here: once your preheater gets up to temperature, your board has to catch up. So it's the same as heating up your car in the morning. If you turn, you know, start your car, turn your heat on, go back in the house, in about 15 minutes, your car is warmed up. Your your engine has to heat up first. So your plates are like the engine; they heat up and get up to temperature, but then it has to actually transition that heat over to the board. So whenever you're preheating something, it's not just about blasting your preheaters up to 180 degrees and then you're done. Um, and if you look at the profiles that come with this machine, what you'll see is that uh, the profiles that come with this machine really have a very short uh, span of time. So all of the Scottle machines, all of the ACHI machines, all of uh, all the machines out there have very short preheats, very short ramps, and very short uh, very short soaks and very short reflows. And what, what you're going to see is those profiles really don't work. And the reason they don't work is because they're not taking into consideration the, the large populated, densely populated boards like an Xbox or PS3. A lot of components to heat up, a lot of board to heat up, PS3 is the, the, the biggest one, so it, it's very thick, has a lot of large large metal chips, a very solid ground plane. This entire thing is filled with copper, uh, so you have a ground throughout the whole board. So it's basically a big sheet of metal, and to transition the heat into that populated uh, component populated sheet of metal, it's going to take quite some time. We're at 150, and our board is now at 70, so we're, we're not even half of what our, um, our preheater is running. So we've been preheating for probably uh, four minutes already, and we're still shooting up there. Now, typically an, an IR preheater, like an 8280, uh, 360, an IR360, uh, the HR6000, the IR6000, 
and any of the other units um, correlated to like a Zhao Mao or um, ACHI, any of the units with the IR heaters, your IR heat time <coughs> is typically a uh, IR heat time is about seven to ten minutes. So an 8280 could take eight or nine, maybe even ten minutes to completely warm up the plates, but also warm up your board. The plate temperature will be up to temperature. It's it's almost there now. So in about five to seven minutes, your plates are up to temperature, but it takes almost um, nine or ten minutes to heat up your board. So your preheat phase for a PS3 or Xbox is going to be close to ten minutes. And um, we're now at 162, and we are slowly climbing up. We're at 100. Uh, we're at 80 on the board, and we're going to wait a little while, see what that temperature comes up to. I have a feeling we're going to actually have a lot of loss here. Um, so our, I think our preheat's going to have to be a lot hotter. Um, the controller is already pulsing the plates and slowing down, so it's already slowed down preheating. So it's climbing, it's climbing slower at this point, so it's going to take a while to get up to 190. But our board has pretty much stopped almost around 82, 83. So we're going to let that run for the full, full uh, about three... Let's see about um. Actually, our preheater has been running. Uh, we're at 11 minutes, so our preheater has been running six minutes. So we're gonna let that run a few more minutes, and then we're probably gonna have to run this again. So I'm not going to video running it again. So we're gonna skip to the next phase, which is running our next set of profiles for our hot air. But um, we'll do a summary here at about 13 minutes to see where we're at, and uh. I can tell you right now our board has stopped at 82 so our machine is not preheating any hotter so what we want to do for one thing is we're going to need to kick this up so let's take a look here and see what we can do all right I'm going to kick that to um to 250 our, plate, our board did stop at 84, so our temperature had stopped. So at 84, we were at 160, so if we kick it up almost another 100 degrees, that should get us to 185, you know, roughly. We'll take a look and see here. We have a lot of heat on this side and not so much heat over on this other side yet, which is something we're going to want to take a look at. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off this right here, since that's pretty much completely outside of the board here. using an adapter here onto the wall outlet, so we're going to see how that's holding up. We're running this unit off of a 10,000 watt uh, transformer, which is fan cooled, which should be able to keep up. It's definitely pulling a lot of juice on those preheaters because you can hear the noise in the transformer. So we're starting to climb again here. We kicked it up to 250. We're going to see how high this, this panel goes. So we're at 14 minutes. So basically, we're going to work out this preheat issue, um, and then we'll be back. We'll shoot another video. But basically, we're going to be working on this bottom IR and seeing how hot, how hot we can get that and how, what our fix is, and we'll go over that when we start our next video. But thank you for watching, and then... Um, our next video is going to cover, uh, we're going to finish up our, our lower heater, get that set up so we know what, what to preheat at, and then the next video we're going to step in with our hot air nozzles and we're going to fine tune those so that we got a working profile. So we'll be back shortly and we'll talk to you then.